Hello guys, my name is Rebecca Imamo. Welcome to another episode on The Talk with Rebby. The Talk with Rebby is a program whereby we welcome guests from different walks of life to come right here on this show to share their, their life experiences, to share their mistakes, their failures and their successes. Last episode we had a beautiful lady on the show and she was able to share her experience. She told us about her first relationship which lasted for six years and ended after introduction and pain of bright price. It was really a sad one and she was able to, you know, tell us everything that happened and now she has learned a lot and she was able to share a lot with us and we learned a lot from her story. So today we have another guest on the show. Yes, this time around we do not have a female guest, we have a male guest because in our society we know that a lot of male go through, they go through a lot that they cannot share with people. They, you know, men are taught to always max up their emotions and not show their flaws and not show their vulnerability. But today we have a male guest now, Mr. is ready to, sh to share his experiences with us. So I'll be introducing him right now. <laughs> yes, yeah, he's okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We are so happy to have you on the show. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Um, um, nice being here. Sorry, this show is starting late. Uh, had some issues, and, uh, but we are here. So, <laughs> yeah, we are so happy to have you. So, can you kindly introduce yourself to our guests? Uh, sorry, to our viewers. We like to know you more. Okay. Just give us a brief um, details about you. Okay. Um. My name is um, Abubakar Osman Ibrahim. Uh, uh, I'm an energy expert, so to speak. Uh, I presently work uh, with the biggest trading company, uh, bitumen trading company in Nigeria, uh, Aska Nigeria. Uh, my experience is actually span the upstream, midstream, and downstream sector of the oil and gas industry. So, um, uh, I've been into a lot of things and challenges in life that has actually shaped me and made me who I am today. Okay. So as time goes on, I'll be revealing a lot, a lot about myself and how my story can actually inspire someone watching this show. Okay, we are so happy to have you. You know, it's something that is very rare to do, coming, you know, leaving your precious home and coming here to share your experience so that someone out there can listen to your story and learn from it in order to make better decisions for themselves. So we really appreciate you and we are very happy. We are grateful that you are here today, Mr. Abubakar. So um, I would like to employ all our viewers out there to listen attentively to his story, to pay attention so that we can learn a few things from the story. So. Um, we are giving the um, go ahead to Mr. Abubakar so please um, be natural, just let it flow, tell us everything, do not hold back, uh, you know, just just be free and um, if you have to be vulnerable, please, you are, you, are human, you, are, you, are, you are a human after all, so please, nobody is above being emotional and all that, so um, over to you Mr. Abubakar, we are all listening to you, the viewers are listening and I am listening. Okay. Thank you very much. Hi, viewers. Uh, okay, where do I speak in from? Uh, okay, um, I'll just give a brief about uh, my ideas about life. Um, I'll start briefly from my secondary school days and uh, my journey through life and how, and where I am, and where I'm looking to get to in the future. So um, I'm not your regular guy that is just uh, or that actually went to you know, one of these big schools around here. Yeah, my pre-primary, pre-secondary school was actually good. Yeah, I went to some two secondary uh, primary schools and all that. But along the line, things happened. That's life. So went to Jack on Day, to secondary schools and all that. Be that as it may, we moved on and all. You know. Get a university, get a get admission to the university. But there's an interesting story before my admission to the university. Okay, um, when I left uh, secondary school, um, I spent five good years. Yeah, it might be incredible for to to uh, to imagine, you know, leaving school for uh, five years, I mean secondary school, before you securing admission to your first year in the university. Although, 
we all know what happens to uh, what's it called jam and all that uh, and stuff so it's just a normal thing uh, in our own society here i know i'm coming from a family that would say mm, okay let me just reverse a little let me go back in time so that it will be as if maybe we, my, yeah i'm rushing things yeah i'll just give you i'm from a family of um, 14. Okay. yeah i'm the fourth of 14. wow my, my dad had two wives we all stood together in my father's house somewhere on the mainland satellite town besides me so you can see that it's not it, as like that is not even his stand so at some point in life all man has to fight for themselves at least ourselves or so as the case may be so I'll tell you that uh, we're not privileged to you know, go the uh, do I say go to a private university. So we're all struggling to attend the public universities, and those were one of the things that actually took me time. So, but after my secondary school, I started working. I started up as a sales or a filling station attendant. I worked for a good four years. You understand? Station uh, diligently. I worked uh, behind the, one of the one of the service station on the mainland. So I worked uh, between uh, 2003 to 2007. Yeah, uh, I actually came in 2007. By the way, I attended the University of Illinois. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's my alma mater, anyways. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. uh, I completed in 2011. I went to service in 2011. Uh, I ended up in 2012. One year, the data states. We did it precisely. Okay. So, so it has been a, a tough one for me. And um, I'm this kind of person that believes so much in, um, in myself. Okay. And I encourage people to actually, because if you believe in yourself, other people will believe in you. It's what you have that people will see. You understand? And by believing in yourself, what it means is that you need to challenge the status quo. You need to start challenging the status quo about life. And it's until you start asking the right questions that things will start opening up. If you don't ask questions, just like in class, if you don't ask questions, <laughs> excuse me. Yes, Maybe, sir. Yeah. Let's <coughs> Thank you. Um, if you don't ask questions, you can never get answers. So you need to ask questions. And when you start asking questions, challenging the status quo, asking yourself why is this thing like this, then you start seeing that things will start happening around you. You understand? From one place, from one place to another, so you are asking questions, it's taking you to another question and things and questions and questions like that. Then the answers will start revealing itself. You understand? By so doing, you're developing a content. You're building yourself internally. You you know you know more that person that doesn't know what to do. what to do exactly. So and you keep and that is a way to develop. And in life, you keep you have to keep um, building and asking questions and developing yourself to move to the next step in life. So I'll give you a brief rundown of my life in uh, in the what we call in the, in the filling station before I left. Okay. Now um, while working, I I. You know, you being the station, imagine you being the station, having to see people coming into the station, young people like yourself, you understand that maybe they are working in the bank or working in a very good place, coming with their cars, and you'll be the person filling their, their car. I mean, that alone is enough for you to be restless. And what you have to say is, what have I done? I can get, I can be better than I am now. That is just a question. I can be better. What did they do? What are they doing right that I'm not doing? You know, I knew I had to go to school. You understand? I just knew I just how hard to was just trying to do something, something different, and you know. So I kept pushing, 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 and pushing, and all that. So I went to uh, UME, a jam that you know, I went to jam like four times. You know, funny enough, I made over two hundred in all of them. You understand, yeah. but the race for admission and everything, you know how tough it is, who you know, and things and all that stuff like that. But eventually, in 2017, in fact, I even said I'm going to do a time after I'm, I'm not going to write this jam again after 2017. But as God will have it, my name came out. In fact, I couldn't even believe, believe it myself. 
you understand? Because in everything you do, there's always a God factor. Who God first? Don't always just focus on God. Yeah, it might take time, but it's just a matter of time. You understand? Before uh, you start getting yeah, results. Start, start getting results. And once you, 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 you persevere, you remain steadfast and all that, you would uh, definitely make it. That's just uh, the, uh, my philosophy to life. So, like I said, uh, these are things that happened while I was working in the service station. Although I was given the position, I even was in this position of uh, uh, the shift captain, you understand, in the finish station. That's uh, somebody that is uh, just after the manager and the next in line. But, is that the kind of time I want to do? There are people that are working here, they have families, they, got in, uh, they are married and all that. But, you know, you can, you yourself, you can actually imagine the, um, the sub level they will be in the society. I don't want to. I don't want to be that kind of person. I want to be that kind of person that walks into an office, sit down in a similar condition. You know things like that. People you know want to. I know exactly. Be. I knew what I wanted to do. Right? I know what I wanted to do. But it's just a matter of time and limitation. So we now. Oh yeah, my father was supportive. I would say, but uh, he doesn't really have to get without financial wise and all that, you know, if not I won't have even started working or work, go, go to work after my secondary school in the first place. So I had to sit down, try I had to like think about my life. I had to think of what to do. I had to like um, um, try and uh, you know encourage myself, you understand. It's only when you encourage yourself that you, you, you see people that will encourage you, that will help you, that will try to you know want to share things with you and all that. And that similar thing happens even in my own family. Like I said, uh, in the local uh, parlance, they will say, and I'm picking you up on the line, the father will carry you, or the parents will carry you, understand? So if it's somebody that is struggling, that is trying to, uh, right, that is trying to, yeah, to make be better, exact, to be better in life, yeah. oh, the father will say, oh, let me just even support, support this person now, and yeah. do this person. So the journey went on like that until my vision came in 27, 207, when I. Okay, 2007. 2007, yeah. 2007, and I left uh, the police station for, you know. By the way, I studied geology. Okay. Yeah, so um, I got in the I was, there was no relationship, there was nothing. I was just myself. Because I already spent so much time at home. I didn't want something that would delay me in school and all that. So I just stayed fast. Now, funny enough, uh, I'm just kind of pissed that I didn't make the first class. I didn't make the two. Okay. So I made it two two. Uh, and I want to start my story from that point. Uh, it is assumed that once you don't make the first class or a two two or a two one, and in worst case scenario, be a two two. That the life is not uh, your life is not your be like if you went to school. For nothing, you understand. That's the way the society has uh, framed, framed the system. Exactly, system. <laughs> but it's not like that, you understand. The truth of the matter is that you need, like I said earlier, you need to believe in yourself. You need to have a mindset of, um, of growth, of development, of adding value to anything you're doing. Not just that, but before you add value to anything, you have to add value to yourself. Like I said, you need to develop content. You need to know what you want to do. You need to know the industry you want to belong. You need to, you know, learn about it. You can go, there are so many resources online. In fact, we are living in the best generation, uh, as I speak, you understand? So where information are actually at your fingertips, available online, you understand? So you could actually do all these things online. In fact, you could actually even practice CV. Master it, go online, read the resources about it, about that particular position or particular opening and all that. I get information from there. You understand? All you need to do is just for you to, you know, go for the interview, shatter the interview, and learn on the job. Once given the opportunity to start, to start up, you understand? You learn on the job, and before you know what's, what's happening, you are there. Not a bad experience, not about uh, uh, what, what, what are you always doing at times. So it's happened like that and all that. So now another story came up after my uh, my NYC. By the way, while I was in uh, NYC, I was in 
involved in so many things. I was even facilitating, I was even lecturing in uh, project management, I was doing, uh, I was lecturing in uh, HSC, I was lecturing in supply chain management, I was working part time with a company, a resource house called the uh, debt management uh, international institute then somewhere in Benin City. So I was going from every Saturday I was going from Delhi to Benin or like that you know. I was that process I actually did the program during my service here. So they uh, employed me then as uh, a facilitator, you understand, and, and the marketer as well. So every Saturday I'm engaged to actually go talk to hoppers away from my zone where they don't know me, you understand, things like that. So I was doing that consistently. So you know, I did that for a while till I graduated from uh, till I ended up my NYC. And uh, to be frank, I had this notion that in fact, when, once I even leave service, it will even take me maximum of two years, uh, two months rather, to get a job. That was how confident I was. You know, it happened like that. So after my NYC, I served with the Delta State Direct Labor Agency. After my NYC, I I, I was told uh, the company, because it was a construction company, I was told the com company only hires an uh, ETG and it has to be approved by the state government and all that. But my director general then was like, okay, you give me a note to send it back in Asaba to start up. But I've never wanted to work in a bank because of the stories I've had and all that, like that. So I turned that opportunity. You understand? Meanwhile, there are people here in Lagos that will probably see me that, uh, jobs that once I leave service, I can just calm down and, you know, from my west to, uh, what's it called, uh, uh, Dangote, uh, plant in uh, Ibichi, states to, yeah, you know, to handle, you know, people, people that I met there before the system, before I left to handle them, you know, it's because I used to go to their office, so I know I knew some people there, though some of them have left, but I still, you understand, what? What I'm trying to say is that they were all stories, you understand? All. You know, I even, at, all, at some point, I even spent money, little money that I saved while in the service, you understand? I'm trying to, you know, you know um, going to meet a lot of people, this and that, to meet this and so it went on. This bit. So I stayed about four years post service. Four years post service without a job. And you know how that can be. You understand? I've, I've seen a scenario where I've watched this case whereby somebody um, landed up his service here in, a, in, a, in 2014, uh, November, December, and the person killed himself in February of 2015. Mm. Can you imagine? He wow. died as a result of. That's if I, employment. Yes. Wow. The, person, the person is uh, somebody that even went to a private university, uh, a particular university. It's somebody that I don't know the person directly, but uh, a friend, a close to a friend. He killed himself at some kind of country after going to school to spend uh, how many years money and everything to come out there, new job. But you won't blame anybody. <laughs> of course, it's what the, uh, the leaders have turned the country to be, you understand? But then you just have to keep pushing. Forget about that. How do you think of ideas that will make things better? You understand? Just think of a problem that you can solve, and you know. So these are just the issues. Then I always constantly, I always try to challenge myself. That's another thing. Recently, there was a story that made it online and all that about some young guys from Pestak. Okay, they sold. Uh, uh, yeah, so I mean, from American investors for two hundred million dollars. My wife is here. You can ask her. For three days, I couldn't sleep. Yes, I was challenged. I couldn't sleep. Yeah, I've heard of this stuff. I just thought it was not one of these uh, normal payment platform and everything like that. But for something, if you co convert that money to Nigeria, that's over ninety billion naira. <laughs> And you know what that means. <laughs> you can imagine. So I just sat down with those. I just kept thinking. I'm all like, are you serious? So you just have to start thinking and you know, mix with uh, the right minds, people that you guys can do things together, motivate you, motivate you, and you know, move ahead together in life.
So basically, that's just me. I'll just prefer you ask me some questions and <laughs> I can take yeah. it from there because I can't remember everything. Okay, oh, definitely, it's fine. So you've been able to share your experiences about how you started off right from secondary school and how you were able to persevere. You knew what the fact what actually um, um, actually made me very uh, inspired by what you said. You said you knew what you wanted to be. You know, the first thing about life is you have to have that picture. Nobody, nobody can have that picture for you. And it doesn't matter the age, the age you have. You can be 14, you can be 13, but you have a picture of where you want to be or who you want to be. So once you have that dream, once you have that vision, you always strive as much as possible to make sure that, you know, there are some things that may look like it. Yeah. You get in some position, like, you be like, okay, I think this looks like what I want, but you know it is not going to So you don't set, you don't set you for what you know you deserve. So you, you said it that you knew actually what you wanted to do. Even when you saw some of your colleagues, they were getting married and, you know, starting up a family, even yeah. without, without little income and all that. You, 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 you kept striving to become what you wanted to be. You later got admission and everything. And you, you, said something about the fact that okay when you didn't make um, the first class or the two one you know so I think at that stage you might be feeling like um, you, you might not, you might be feeling like you're not up to up it to you might be feeling like how oh, where will you start from and all that but you believed in yourself and that that is that is a very rare thing that is one of the major ingredients in making it in life if you let other people's opinion to find, find you, you definitely you will not you will not be able to attain the heights you want to get to in life first it, it starts from the inside there's no even for for like what you, you see outside or, or what you think you can do or what other things other people think you can do first you need to believe in yourself in fact if you end up with the worst certificate ever as long as you know that you can do this you know you know what you have you believe so much in yourself guess what that is enough for you to succeed. Once you know that, okay, I, I, I have this, you know, I have this trust in myself. I know what I can do. And you believe so much in that. Trust me, whatever you do, you are going to come out successful. So Mr. Abubakar told us that he, he had, he, he believed in himself. Despite what the, the society has framed the system to be, he knew that he could succeed, he could, he could come out with something better. Do you understand? So um, I just want to... I'm at that at that stage, um, after you finish your um, your, your university yeah. and all that, how, how were you able to, um, you know, um, get? Uh, how, how were you able to encourage yourself not to, you know, think less and probably just go for little things? How were you able to strive at that? No, even with this particular certificate, I know that I can apply for this uh, institution because you know, once you have this kind of certificate, you be like, oh. Applied to this particular institution, I, I don't think I can apply to this company. They're not collecting the certificate. I don't think I'm qualified for it. Okay, but there, was there a time you felt like you're not qualified for a particular job um, vacancy that you ever saw? Do you feel like, oh, my my um, certification is not up to me? Yes, yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. The truth of the matter is that uh, there are challenges and there are challenges. Okay. Um, in fact, I there was even a, a time I went to I I, 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 in fact, I, 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 I attended various interviews even within that four years. And so I told you I don't have a job. I attended various interviews. At some point, I just had no choice than to bring the God factor in it. Yeah, I told God that God should not have tried. You understand? One of my greatest wish now is just for me to just sit down and someone just come on the phone and tell me. Come, come, come and start, come and start job. That was one of the things I and believe you me, that was what happened. You understand? Before now, in fact, there was a, there was a particular interview that got me so pissed off. You understand? I got me pissed off because it was a street uh, about I think it's a three stage interview. We've done the first interview. We uh, scheduled for another interview. Uh, sometimes later, we came. We are scheduled to, to meet with the MD of the company, which is the final, uh, the final stage of the, of the program. And uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a, a, a gas company. Uh, they're into LPG and some other stuff. Uh, but it's a bit big, so to speak, somewhere in Victoria uh, Island. So, you know, for us to have been in the interview room with the MDC, you know, we were there, we told you, asked us some questions, and you know. 
about four candidates in all. And all of a sudden, the guy just said, doesn't like our faces. You know, I, I felt so bad. I felt so, you know, so, 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 so demoralized. I felt, he said, he even asked the question, even though it took us time to get, he was actually not there. I think the particular question he asked was like, how many, how many liters make a gallon, I think, yeah? That was what they were asking. And you know, me and I, I was actually basking on uh, the fact that I've worked in the police station. We, you know, we do it, uh, we do a lot of gallons and yeah, and all stuff. So I knew there are some gallons that are five gallons, some gallons that are four. Mm-hmm. You understand? So there was this uh, discrepancy about it actually. But the actual, uh, this was supposed to be four uh, liters, you know, things like that. So it took me time to actually answer, which I eventually did. But to cut the story short, the guy was like, doesn't like our face and all that. That was hard. That was the end of the interview. We all left. Now, let me not type the bit much from the question. Um, the issue of uh, me not applying for okay, one thing I was actually doing, you understand me, that I was uh, leveraging on the fact that I have worked even before I went to the university. You understand? So I don't want that to go into the down the drain. You understand? So once I once there's a, there's, a, there's an opening related to that, I always bring that to the fore. To my CV to, to ensure that okay, I had a pre university experience, experience in this particular yeah, field, field okay. before you understand. Okay. So, even when I'm when there's uh, they are telling you, there are some of the uh, vacancies are stating posts, uh, yeah. university or for them, I see experience and all that, I still apply. Okay. Let them decide, okay. you understand. Let them decide, or just apply, you know. Okay, there's another question I want to even ask. Okay, at the stage where you were actually um, going for various interviews and all that, did you, for any means, think of probably venturing into business, something other than like your career, what you wanted to do? Like, did you feel like, okay, since this one is not working, I'd r- rather dive into another aspect? Do you understand? Like, maybe start up a business or something. Did you, yes. in any way, yes, yes, think about that? Yes, yes, but it crossed my mind so much. Let me even give you a, a brief again. That's why I said I couldn't say anything. I couldn't remember because this our head is full. <laughs> We're only thinking about money. Okay. Um, there's another aspect of me that uh, I didn't uh, tell you, which I believe I will have introduced myself much earlier for that. Okay, I'm a managing partner at uh, Ted Coil Energy Services Limited. Uh, I'm the founder of Hydro Carbon Diabetes Limited. Uh, we just uh, we started the company last year and uh, we doing very well for the year. So, uh, I'm also the promoter of Career Connect, even though it's a non profit uh, 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 platform here yeah, for now. But we tend to rebrand and do something big with it. Before the year runs out, we actually have all that inside it. I'm going to get it to the start and start something good about it and look for content that become directors and all that to take it to the next step. So, there are so many things that we, I, I was because I was I learned so much even within my years of joblessness. Okay, within that four years, I was able to develop myself in areas of the oil and gas industry. Since I have a prior university experience, so I went fully into upstream, and um, uh, I was just working with some few people that would facilitate transactions and all that things like that. All the gas transaction, basically, light and uh, automatic gas oil and stuff like that. So we were working with some people, looking at okay, if we could still have a first deal, we we'll just go and register a company and become, you know, legally. Uh, operating legally, things like that. We tried and tried and tried and tried, and tried but we didn't really succeed you know, in that aspect, right? We tried and tried. So, so along the lines, we're trying. I'm also developing a competence in the oil and gas sector. You know, trying to understand. So even it was even easier. Even the job I'm doing, like, was even much easier for me when I went to interview. At some point, where my uh, HR director, as we we're talking, we left the interview and started talking about politics and some other things. You know. So it's just, uh, you just have to like, you don't just have to do sound. Even employers don't want to see gaps in your CV, no. You just have to be like, okay, what were you doing in this period and in this period? What are you doing? What were you engaged in? And things like that. 
So you just at, at, at every point in time, like I said, you just, no matter how little that thing, even if it's a book, pick it and read. You understand? You definitely uh, add up to something. Um, thank you so much for um, sharing this wonderful experience with us. In fact, personally, I have learned a lot, and I'm very sure that the viewers out there, the viewers out there, they've been able to learn a lot, not even a few things, a lot of what you have said. I'll just like to just summarize everything that you have said to our viewers so that they can have a better understanding of all the stories and experiences that you have shared with us today. So, um, Mr. Bubaka was able to share his experiences with us about. Um, Secondary school, post secondary school experience after four years later gained admission, and after university, he stayed like four years more before he actually got a job. So, what I just want to say is definitely, um, you know, some of the things that we want in life may take time, you may not have this immediately we want them, but that doesn't mean that you should give up, it doesn't mean that you should do it. There was something Mr. Baka said, he said that first, the um. He believed in himself, which this is something that nobody will do for you. Nobody will teach you. You have to. It has to come from within. You have to have this conviction. I would say it's a conviction. You have to have this assurance in yourself that there's nothing you set your mind to that you will not achieve. So once you have that belief in yourself and you 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 you, you know you have the, you believe in your abilities to do some certain things, I'm very sure that whatever you set your mind to do you definitely achieve. And he said he also said that we should challenge the status quo. Now we have various fields that we want to go to in life. I have my dreams, you have your dreams. We have different areas we have different industries where we can prosper as an individual you know what you want to be you know what you want to be aside from okay you know some people their parents actually choose the profession that you know they should go into but you yourself you know what you are capable of doing you know what you enjoy doing you know what you are passionate about you know the career the focus line you want to you know we want to dive into so even if challenges are coming in that area that you cannot actually do what you really want to do definitely you can like he said even when he didn't get his dream job he was doing something to add up um, his knowledge he was doing something to just develop himself so even if you don't get what you actually want now that doesn't mean that you should just take milk and you know just stay there until you, work, when, when, until you get what you actually want to get no that is not the wise thing to do you can di diversify in order to have enough knowledge whatever is available available to you at that time even if it's running a business even if it's working for someone for free okay. even if it's you know being an intern in a particular company even if they are paying you peanuts for that job all you all you are gathering is experience. experience you understand so once you gather that experience even in the major field that you want to dive into when you eventually get there guess what those little things that you felt like they were nothing will be helpful along the line so i just want us to know that whatever you you know the way nigeria is now you, you actually even when you graduate from school there's no job secured for you in fact even when i graduated and so when i finished my advice i was like where what did i start from I like it was really you know i know how difficult it can be but please do not let that hold you back whatever you find you whatever you can do immediately after school do it don't care even if people you know even if people are like ah is this what you're doing now don't care about what people do you know your journey you know where you're going to so it's you that you, you know you know your pathways so whatever you're doing now even if people are going to laugh at you 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 yourself know where you are going to in life so everything is not nothing is permanent even if you start little it's not going to be permanent you are going to grow so just know your focus line and i know nigeria the way the country is you know you can change your you know you invest in for change your career yeah then if, <laughs> if you are lucky enough to get that particular dream um course, course. in fact nigeria will not come, come ahead with change it. Yeah, exactly. so, <laughs> so i'll just say that once you're passionate about your field even if at the moment you're not getting what you want yes you can do other things but don't leave that particular um dream that particular career that you actually want to dive into don't give up don't give up. Don't let Nigeria make you give up. You can do it even without the country supporting you. You are going to get there. So I just want to encourage us that, please, your dreams are valid. Whatever you set your mind to do, you can do it. Just believe in yourself. Challenge the status quo. Do things differently. You don't have to do it the normal norm, the way people do it. Just be unique. And he said God factor, which is very important. Whatever you plan, if you like plan from A to Z, if God is not involved, Definitely you might. You might not you might. You will not <laughs> succeed in it. So please let's not forget the God factor. So um thank you so much to our viewers for watching. Um 
this episode on the talk with Rebi um, is a very exciting one I've, and I've been able to learn a few. So um, thank you so much uh, Mr. Abubaka for being our guest. We are so happy to have you on this show and um, uh, we we have a little something to thank you because we, we usually have sponsors that sponsor and give our guests whenever they come just to thank them. So um, last week we had a sponsor and that was Day and Your Express Logistics and uh, you know the CEO was really excited about it and she was like, okay, this week I'm going to sponsor again. So um, we have something for you. So just to help us. Come in. So thank you so much. Um, so a big shout out to J and No Express Logistics. Yes, they are into international, interstate and local deliveries. They are really, really good at what they do actually. So you can check them up on um, Instagram, you can check them at J and No Express Logistics. Yes, they, they are really good with what they do. So we are thanking them for getting our guest today on this episode. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> so to all our viewers, thank you so much for watching. Kindly tell your friends, your family, your loved ones to watch the talk with Rebby on YouTube and also on our Instagram handle at Priceless Rebby. So um I said earlier last week that if you want to be a guest on this show, just send a message to just send a mail to me on um Rebecca irabo at gmail sorry rebecca irabo 234 at gmail.com or you can call me on this line zero eight one six seven zero five 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 three seven or you can send me a dm on my um, instagram handle at priceless Rebe. so we'll attend to you and if you want to be a sponsor also you can reach me through those um handles and the phone number that i've mentioned earlier um if you want to be a sponsor just let me know how you intend to do it if you are going to send us um the gifts yourself or you're going to you know get the price of the item and then send us the money and we get it for the gift for the guest and then we give it to the guest right here on the show and you see what you actually got for them so um we are wrapping things up now so is there any final notes that you have for our viewers today um yes 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 i want to say all our viewers and all the more viewers out there that uh, one you need to believe in yourself two continually develop content in the stand that's the only way you can be refined and continue to be relevant in the scheme of things in your society three be safe coronavirus is real have uh, seen it kill somebody close to me and uh, wash your hands observe all um, safety protocols yeah. and be safe yes please be safe thank you so much for watching my name remains rebecca irabo and thank you for watching us on the topic baby bye for now bye <laughs>